What's up guys and welcome back to the Battle of Central Europe Season 3. This is going to be the second game in the best of two between Virtus Pro Polar, currently up 1-0, and Moscow 5 here on the Heflo TV Hitbox 1 channel. We're going to be bringing you the rest of the games we follow Moscow 5's run for today and I think tomorrow too. I'm Mike Loris, I have Grandis here as well and I think Moscow 5 probably just have to avoid the huge wombo combos in order to take this game as it is inherently, it does have an, its inherent weaknesses, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's fair. They just relied too heavily on those cooldowns, and whenever one of them died, it was a crucial piece of the puzzle that was missing. And in the end, Gyrocopter down for more than 130 seconds with that Aghanim Scepter ulti from the Necrophos. There was nothing they could do. And yeah, they just found a window where there was no Gyrocopter and no Ravage. The only ultimate that they had was the Echo Slam, and even that didn't come out. It was just too much, and that's why Moscow 5 pretty much had to tap out of the last game. So hopefully this game they're going to find something that's more consistent, at least not as tied down by one cycle spells. Yeah, and Virtus Pro, I mean, they kind of had the gold advantage for almost the entire game. There were a couple points in time where it didn't seem like it, but it just all accumulated up at the end. And, you know, you had the Scythe from Necrophos, you had a very dangerous Lycan Throw with BKB and the level 3 Necro book. Like, it all just seemed to come out all at the same time and that was just overwhelming for moscow 5 and as you said layering their stuns or layering their ultimates rather fairly poorly to deal with that meant that they were constantly without ultimates whenever virtus pro were right outside their base and obviously that's not going to be good times this game it is going to be the ogre magi banned out this time but i don't know if the old ogre magi was accomplishing that much uh I mean, a couple the courier snipes were definitely fantastic and well, maybe Virtus Pro are going to make that happen with a different hero, but who knows? The first pick could be pretty much anything, as it will be a Skyrath Mage opening. Once again, I believe that was the first pick of the last game as well. Yeah, and it is a pretty solid first pick at that. It usually gets the job done, a lot of damage, so nice control. Skyrath Mage is pretty much here to stay, even though he's been nerfed a little bit in the last patches. It's, I don't know, just going to stick there. He's not going to ever be a not solid support unless something drastic changes that is mystic player now channeling or something like that yeah like that <laughs> that would, it would still be inconvenient for the scarath mage but uh i think he would still be a fringe support pick like it does do a crap ton of damage even if you have to sit there and channel it i mean you're probably you're probably gonna die anyway as scarath mage but who knows? You could cancel it early, I suppose, and get out. So anyway, Virtus Pro, they're going to go for Tidehunter Witch Doctor. Uh, it was Tidehunter Scarath Mage for the last time for Moscow 5, but it's going to be Virtus Pro this time to pick those two heroes up. I mean, the Witch Doctor for VP worked amazingly well for them, and if they could get even a part of, what, of the performance of last game, then they should be looking to be pretty good. Yeah, definitely, and... This Witch Doctor is probably going to have a pretty good time this game as well. This time he's going to have a bigger ultimate to set up for that Death Ward. And especially if Aghanim Scepter comes out for this Witch Doctor, that in and of itself can completely wipe a team if you get a good single or even double Ravage. And last game we only saw him being set up with a Dream Coil, so and it still did a crap ton of damage. So uh, Witch Doctor clearly is going to have some impacts, assuming he's not just completely shut down up against the Scarath Mage. It is possible. Having a fast silence is fantastic against both Tidehunter and Witch Doctor, and Slark is going to be picked up by Moscow 5 very highly. We've been seeing more and more of Slark as of late. Phasis Void is still in the pool, and it would, first of all, be very good against Slark, but also it would combo fantastically with the Witch Doctor. So Moscow 5 have to take care of it because that hero can absolutely demolish them. Yeah, I expect it to be banned out. They're going to protect their Slark pick a little bit more with a Doom ban. Uh, coming out from Moscow 5 as well. I'm very curious to know the reason behind Slark being so popular, especially in this tournament. It just seems that out of nowhere he's become like first, second pick material. Even though as a hero, I think he's really good. I'm not sure if he is worthy to pick up so early on. As it just leaves the enemy team enough picks in order to counter him. Faceless Void's going to be available. If Virtus Pro want to snag it up for themselves, they will have that option as they have one band and then the next pick. Yeah, the Slark I don't think has been changed recently, at least nothing really comes to mind. Uh, I guess like having an aggressive hero is always going to be preferable than super, super passive heroes, and Slark could be played in a myriad of ways, but yeah, I'm kind of on the same boat as you. It, it's understandable, as you could very clearly see the impact of Slark, especially once he gets going, but 
sometimes he just doesn't do anything, and those times are a little bit more frequent than I really would like to see from a hero that is picked so highly. That being said, he is going to you know have a couple of aggressive targets. Witch Doctor, first of all, is very, very easy to bring down as Slark, and he will have to work through a Ravage, but that's about it for now. Ancient Apparition going to get kicked out, and now, I mean, Virtus Pro, they have all the time in the world to counter this Slark. It is hard, of course, to counter him, but Necrophos is a pretty good way to go. Like, you could drop to half, and maybe you're, you're counting on Shadow Dance to save you. All of a sudden, Scythe, and you're down for a minute. Yeah, it counters the way that Slark wants to be playing, which is getting into the fight, getting his burst damage off, and then escaping on really low HP, and you just can't count on that up against a Necrophos because of that Reaper's Scythe ultimate. And taking out a Slark for that long is incredibly impactful. The Ancient Apparition ban, although it's a solid ban in and of itself, is really good if you want to pick up a Necrophos. Is not being able to heal is crucial for keeping Necrophos alive. If you don't have those Death Pulses or the Sadist heal, you're pretty much just a null hero and really easy to burst down. Um, so for this pro, they're going to be securing themselves a really nice pick, and it's a hero that they seem to be favoring very highly as of late. The AA ban is also going to protect the Witch Doctor as well. Like, Voodoo Restoration is a large amount of sustainability that Virtus Pro are not going to have to worry about losing. Unless, you know, they get silenced and killed before any of those skills can go off. And with two silences now on the board for Moscow 5 in the Puck Rift and the Skyrath Mage Seal, Virtus Pro spell casting is going to be a little bit difficult to actually come out. It's possible for sure, uh, but you really don't want to be going up against silences when you're a Necrophos team when you're a Tidehunter team uh, you could just slap a seal on Tidehunter and just ignore him through a fight so Moscow 5 they have some pretty good answers to what Virtus Pro are packing and well Virtus Pro kind of the same thing uh, maybe they're a little bit light on stuns but this Lich pickup is not going to solve that but it's going to give them uh, I guess a pseudo tool against the Slark and that ice armor but I don't know maybe they're just all aboard the Necrophos train this game I suppose so I don't know I, I'm not a huge fan of this Lich pickup to be honest up against like Elder Titan and heroes that rely on minus armor, I really like the ice armor um, to help out buffing your team. And it's going to make sure that their safe lane or whichever lane this Lich is going to gravitate towards just gets an innate advantage. But I'm not sure if that's worth sacrificing your stunning and killing potential. As with the Witch Doctor alone, he really can't carry that weight. You'd like to have something a little bit more reliable and maybe something with just a really good play stun might have worked better for the Lich, but... Lich is one of those heroes that, if you're comfortable with playing it, it's pretty solid anyway. Moscow 5 didn't go ahead and pick up the Jakuo for themselves. It's still not clear whether this is going to be core or support, but either way, it's going to be a lot of damage, especially combined with the Scarf Mage's Ancient Seal. We haven't seen that many Jakiros in this tournament, so it's refreshing to see him, of course. Uh, Liquid Fire versus Virtus Pro is going to be, for the most part, irrelevant, as none of these heroes are really right-click heroes, but you know, you could always push down their towers and VP are going to have some ways of defending, but initiating power, not really the strongest for them. I still think Faces Void is going to be a pretty nice pickup, as you said, to deal with the Puck and Slark. And because their Lich pick has made them very, very stun light, you need a core who could actually crowd control in some way. And it actually does not get any better than a Chronosphere. And when you're expecting to potentially be pushed, initiation is king. They have no ways of initiating right now, Virtus Pro, except for maybe a Blink Ravage, but that's probably not going to come out in time to defend these pushes. So Moscow 5, they kind of took a roundabout way into a potentially aggressive lineup, but they actually got there. I think even if it is a support Jakiro, they will be able to pressure Virtus Pro pretty hard. Yeah, and that should be fair. Although under normal circumstances, Faceless Void's fairly damaged light if you do pick him up this game. That's not the case. Once you get level 6, especially on your supports, if you get a couple of heroes clumped up, Chain Frost can do a lot of damage, but Death Ward is just so reliable. It's actually going to be a Templar Assassin ban from Moscow 5, which I find fairly peculiar. Although it would have been a decent choice to throw mid up against the puck, it would have left them very control light. Some slows here or there, but their hard stuns are completely in their first two picks, and Paralyzing Cask and the Ravage. I think Moscow 5 could have been more than capable at dealing with a... Holy crap, that's a Night Stalker. Um, sure. Why not? I mean, if you're if you're stun light, if you're like, oh man, I gotta worry about a Slark, gotta worry about a Puck, just crippling fear them, and then they can't cast anything, and then run them down. This is probably the most aggressive pick you could ever make in Dota, I want to say, as this will make Virtus Pro a very cyclical team, and maybe it'll buy enough space for Necrophos to get really big, but... If this game does drag on super late, as powerful as Necrophos is, he's not going to be able to compete with a Slark. Uh, Night Stalker, 
truly an X Factor hero. Very hit or miss. Although most of the time he is miss. I it's been a long time since I've seen a Night Stalker actually work out. Yeah, and that's mostly due just to the fact of the way he works. Usually that first night isn't a very reliable time to get kills for Night Stalker. And then the second night, his peak is kind of already over. He really wants to be aggressive during those first portions of the game. And is he going to be able to do that? I'm not sure. Up against the puck in lane, he should be able to do his job pretty effectively. But Moscow 5, if there was a pick more aggressive than a Night Stalker, I think it'd be Undying. Hmm. I mean, I was just thinking the other day, I haven't seen an Undying in a really long time. We are going to see it in this game, and uh, well, if they do end up in a 3v3 lane, this can very easily work out for Moscow 5. I was thinking more along the lines of an Abaddon, though, for Moscow 5. First of all, a great hero against Night Stalker, keeping everyone alive, and between that and a Slark, it's going to be very difficult for VP to get kills, but going for Undying is kind of like the, the best defense is a good offense strategy and keeping them safe. Um, it's really going to come down to the lanes of Moscow 5. Undying really only works if you are in a 3v3 scenario. Anything else, and he is kind of underwhelming. Yeah, 3v2 can work, 2v2 can work, but yeah, he, he really wants to be able to consistently get two stacks off from those decays and really put the screws to the enemy team at the early portions. That said, we're going to have to see how these lanes are going to shake down for both teams. As for the players and the heroes that are being played by them. We're going to blow your brain on that Undying, Unstable on the Jakiro, Vigas on the Puck, Tron on the Safe Lane Farming Slark, and King R on the Scarath Mage. And on the Virtus Pro side, we got Jotam. He's going to be playing the Lich. Yol is going to be on the Witch Doctor. BZZ is going to make a repeat performance on the Necrophos with Cedoy on the Tidehunter, and God on the Tide on the Night Stalker. This is looking to be a mid lane Night Stalker, which is probably the most common way you're going to see him in your pubs. Generally, in these uh, higher level games, you want to protect his farm, but up against everyone from Moscow 5, like there is probably no terrible lane for the Night Stalker. It's not going to be the best for him, but he has a crap ton of armor. He is pretty tanky. Even if he has up against the Slark, which is probably his worst matchup, or maybe the Jakiro, he will be able to make something happen. And since Unstable is on the Jakiro, it's very unlikely that it's going to be a mid hero. Although, I think for Moscow 5, that probably could be their best bet, putting Jakiro in the mid lane. What's with all this? Yeah, I think that would probably ensure that they win pretty much every mid matchup. Lich, maybe, would be the exception, but that's not going to happen. So it looks like it's going to be Night Stalker versus Puck. Vigas versus God should be a fairly interesting matchup, although I'd say that Night Stalker is favored. Puck shouldn't be shut down completely. And Night Stalker does have quite a bit of base damage, and he's going to be going for a fast bottle. Assuming VP don't get their bottle sniped, knock on wood, then uh, they should be just fine in that mid lane. And you said the way Night Stalker works lends itself to some weaknesses. Landing him in mid lane and getting away with it is a great way to bypass all that because by the time first night falls, you're going to be level 4-ish. It's not the best point for Night Stalker, but it's certainly going to open the door potentially, especially if you get a favorable rune. A double damage, an invis, or a haste can very easily get a kill, assuming the lane that you're ganking into is going to be functional as well. So it's certainly possible for this Night Stalker to get things going, assuming his lanes, his landing stage doesn't get absolutely demolished. And ooh, VP. A little bit of a small move from Cedoy, walked forward and downwards, baiting Moscow 5 into thinking there's an Observer Ward there, so they dropped a Sentry, so Sentry wasted from Moscow 5, Tidehunter literally did nothing, or spent nothing in order to draw that out. Yeah, he's still holding on to the ward inside his inventory, I assume this is just going to be placed to give them some ward vision down, or um, some rune vision on the bottom rune spot, um, but where that's actually going to be, I have no idea, it looks like he's trying to place it up here, and there we go, finally finds that angle to drop that Observer Ward, and... Well, there you go. It's going to be completely freeze. The Sentry Ward's already gone, and they won't have that available for them. The current laning situation coming out from Moscow 5, it is actually going to be Tron in the mid, playing on the Slark. Vigos getting safe lane farm with the Skyrath Mage, and it's just straight up dual lanes coming out from Moscow 5. Hmm, so Jakiro and Undying, that is a pretty deadly lane for sure for Moscow 5. It is not going to be those 3v3 lanes because, well, both sides are going to be running with dual lanes, at least for now, the Scarath Mage is going to be chilling with the Slark over in the mid lane, but Blurbrain and Unstable, they have a lot of chipping potential, 
Can they actually open up and start a fight, however? Because Necrophos will be able to endure most of it. He has eight tangos. He's expecting this to be an aggressive time, and already it's going to be there. But he's actually going to turn around. They're going to turn around into a cask, however, unstable. Taking quite a bit of damage. No death pulse just yet. Blurry Brain beating into this Necrophos. But a double damage rune is going to draw Yol the first blood. Now going to start wailing into Blow Your Brain. They have another death pulse available. This double damage rune is swinging this lane so hard in favor of VP. They just need a couple more hits. It's not quite going to be enough, but Undying, he is going to get roughed up really bad. BZ now going to hit with more liquid fire. Scarf Mage coming in from the side. A Death Pulse and a Cask might be enough to save BZ. And it looks like it will. Now Yol going to turn around for King R. Double Damage Rune still active. It will wear out, but it will be enough to kill off the Scarf Mage. Not before he goes down, though. Witch Doctor is going to be the casualty of war for Virtus Pro. But still, they take a two for one, plus they get first blood. Really, you can't expect to start off much better than that. No, you can't. Witch Doctor already a really nice um, base damage hero and with that double damage rune hitting like a truck harder than a tree and projector if that's easy enough to imagine and with that extra damage Moscow 5 just weren't prepared for that and go a little too aggressively and find themselves in a situation where now Necrovos has been involved in two kills and top lane is not necessarily in their favor Necrovos isn't farming well but then again neither of the two heroes in Moscow 5 and it's not exactly where uh, M5 envisioned this lane to go. Lich has been sitting in mid, denying a little bit of experience periodically, now sitting on the two-minute rune. It is going to be secured by Yol as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, by Jotam. Actually, Tron is going to pick that up. No deny coming out. Now Yol is being pursued with the look of fire as well as the decay spam. It might be enough to kill him off. They just need one more, and I think that's going to do him, and indeed it wills. And Dying picks off the Witch Doctor, tying up the kill score 2-2. Two to two. Not really sure what the Witch Doctor was trying to do there. Obviously, he wanted to secure the uh, the rune for his team, but at that point, he should have just left. But it wasn't going to happen either way, and well, it's going to be a casualty for VP. It's, again, a Witch Doctor death, so it's not really going to be the biggest deal in the world. Uh, the Necrophos still getting those kills and assists. Might be going for a fast mech uh, for a fast hand of Midas again this game. Although, I don't know, maybe you want to be getting a mech instead for the team, as you are planning on playing this rather aggressively. Uh, really, BZ has a couple of options. Of course, the bottom lane has been pretty much left untouched. 8-4 on the puck versus 8-1 on the Tide. Pretty much a wash at this stage. Tidehunter not having to worry about any support heroes is actually getting a relatively easy lane as far as Tidehunter lanes are concerned. Necrovos up on top is going to take a lot of dot damage. He has one death pulse to save himself, and it looks like it will be just enough. Ceiling. Actually, no. Cask now onto King R. Slark dies in the mid lane in the meantime. Yol really wants this kill onto Scarath Mage. He will not be able to find it. BZ has one more pulse available. And he's going to get a little bit of juice from Yol. It looks like everyone's going to survive up on top, but I guess mid lane was just ice or Frost Blast into Void. That does do quite a bit of damage, and Night Stalker already almost at level 5. This is a point where Night Stalker, come the first night time, can actually make a lot happen. Yeah, I think it is going to depend on what that 4-minute rune is for him, but yeah, Night Stalker is hitting a really good point. That Void does do quite a large chunk of damage, and it seems that Tron just underestimated it. A little bit too much, especially with Lich getting some constant harass and Jotam's getting a little bit of a stack up. They don't have the greatest of heroes to clean this out. Titan just probably their best one, and I expect Seedway to get this extra infusion of gold. Well, the four minute rune is going to be haste that Tron is actually going to snag. It's going to mean he's perfectly fine. He's going to try to pick a fight with God because he knows that there is no chance in hell that he is going to be dying here. God pretty fast, so he's not in too much trouble from this Slark, although he's going to try to bait into Jotam. He's going to lay some nukes down onto Tron, but he already salved and bottled. This Slark, very, very healthy, even though he's only level 3. Wow, this Night Stalker has gotten some serious leveling, but up towards the top, we have another fight. Blur Brain going to try to go for Yol. The Voodoo Restoration going to keep him alive, but he turns around for one more hit. It's going to cost him his life, but it also baits the Undying into his own death. Not entirely sure if that's worth it for the Witch Doctor, but it is still a beneficial trade for VP numbers-wise. Yeah, especially for the Necropos, getting 431 gold from that exchange is a little bit more for the Undying. And lucky enough for them, the tower got the last hit, so the Killing Spree gold wasn't all in the pockets of BZZ. Uh, Necropos this game is going to go into Power Treads, presumably not going into Midas, but gee, I think it's unlikely that after that little skirmish in mid, is going to be able to find a huge opening to kill anything in this game. Although he does have the makings of Power Treads, doesn't have those completed yet, and... Slark isn't the easiest of kills for Night Stalker, especially solo. If Slark is on his toes, he should be able to pounce away unless the silence is too long. And the silence isn't even up for Night Stalker. I actually don't like this build coming out from G. Um, the Nighttime, the Ultimate, excuse me, Darkness, it scales quite a bit better. And I like getting one point at that at level 6 to 
lengthen the first night, and even more than that, I think that the silence this game is so important, especially up against a puck and slark. Yeah, I agree. He could just try to avoid ganking the puck in Slark, although he's just going to go for mid right away. This is only a level 4 hero, and the slow beatdown is going to commence. Night Stalker will get the kill, even without the silence. Blur Brain is going to TP out, and G getting a little bit body blocked. He's taking quite a bit of damage. He will go down, I think. Not bottling. I think he could have potentially lived, although it would have been close. Undying Teleportation is going to get the kill, and that shouldn't be happening with a Night Stalker. Uh, I think he was indecisive as to whether or not he wanted to run north or south, and I think he chose poorly. Yeah, his bottle was completely out, so Night Stalker ends up dying under the tower. It was a close scrape, to be sure. Stick or anything on top of that would have saved his life. Now Night Stalker refueled inside the base is going to continuously make use of this first night, but it's starting to wane, and he hasn't really accomplished enough to really make use of this Night Stalker pick. He's going to try ganking Vigos down in bottom. Unless the Ravage lands, this is unlikely that he's going to die. They really needed that point to silence, I feel. But they might try anyway, still it's a decent amount of time that G is using on the map that's not going to accomplish any kills. We are going to see a jump up onto DZZ again. The damage is going to be there, although not immediately. He's able to turn for a Scythe to blow your brain. That's not lethal, but he still ends up getting the kill participation since the uh, tower gets the last hit. Going to be one for one trade up top, probably favoring Moscow 5, but now the Night Stalker is picking a fight in mid. Dream Cool down under tier 1 tower. Vigos dropping too much damage into him. The Night Stalker to fall, and that's going to be all she wrote. His Lich can't do anything. And once again, VP losing both of their cores in God as well as BZZ. Seen that time and time again in the last game. Uh, this time, of course, Witch Doctor is going to be reaping the rewards of the uh, kill and dying up towards top, but not really a huge deal there. VP, their first nighttime phase is almost up, and Night Stalker has gotten one kill, although he has also died twice. Relatively, it's par for the course, unfortunately, and that par is not too good. He's going to try to go for Tron just before the night ends, but he has to worry about the, the Skyrath Mage coming in. He's getting juked to all hell and back. Tron is going to even turn things around, has a pact. He will get blown up, though. Night Stalker will get the kill this time before he dies again, but that's 2 3 1 on Night Stalker. For the first nighttime phase, you kind of want to be, you kind of want to have a better time, but realistically, this is as good as it's going to get. Yeah, uh, outside of misplays on the enemy team, I think you're about right. Night Stalker, he wants to play aggressive, but without easy heroes to gank or some supports that can actually help him in Lich and Witch Doctor really aren't the best, especially at eight minutes in. Night Stalker can't get that traction, and Power Trend's bottle, it's not terrible farm for eight minutes in, but it's not great either. Down in bottom, Blow Your Brain as well as Sedoy now find themselves in a matchup. It's just going to be them trading blows. Ravage still is yet to be used, but Anchor Smash is keeping him at bay. It might be up top where we're going to see the action. Indeed, we will. As the quotes drop onto BCZ, the silence on the Necropost means that no Scythe is going to come out. And Vigos, incredibly low, will be able to jaunt to his orb down towards the south. The Arcane Bolts are flying. Not enough damage. No, Lich Ultimate bouncing back and forth. It gets another bounce on the King R, and that's going to secure his death. BCZ somehow survives, and it's just a support kill. Death Pulse plus that, those two value levels of Voodoo Restoration going to give BZ just enough HP to live through that. Still has a Scythe, really wanted to connect it onto the Scarath Mage, first of all to get the kill, but also extend his death timer by quite large margin. Regardless, he is still leading the way in CS and is still on top of the net worth chart. It looks like he's going to be, I'm pretty sure that's just a casual cloak. Yeah, just with the power treads mostly, this is a relatively low farming game, but it's Necrophos still attempting to be pressured by Moscow 5, which is exactly what they have to do, especially after losing last game so devastatingly to the Necrophos, where they pressured him pretty much zero times. Uh, they're playing right on paper, but it's just not working out for them, and well, it's the support from Yol that's really making the difference this game. I've been uh, kind of impressed by Yol's performance so far. Blow your brain. Well, on the bottom lane is trading hits with Sedoy. There is a Ravage, and Tidehunter does have backup in the form of a Night Stalker who is going to make it nighttime. Here comes Teleportation 1. The Tombstone's already on the deck. They're going to land a Ravage onto Blur Brain and make short work of him, but Vigos looking for an opening. It's going to be God 2. First of all, Dodge Nice Path, which is nowhere close. Mystic Flare is going to be glitched out, but it will actually be enough to kill the Night Stalker. Scarth Mage is going to get that kill. It's once again Night Stalker getting a kill, then dying. I guess it's fine because he got a kill with the Tidehunter, but... Yeah, it's less than stellar for this Night Stalker. Radiant top towers and bash. Definitely. Still, the game is progressing fairly passively. The Slark isn't finding very much as well, despite how subpar or on par 
the Night Stalker is doing. Slark's getting about the same out of it. Ice Path up top, not going to land as Tron goes strong into Yol. Doesn't get the pass of the Dark Pack, doing decent damage, but now it's BZZ to take the brunt of the action coming out from the Undying as well as secure this. An ultimate from Yol, it just doesn't do enough, and Tron's able to heal on the back lines. It was the Shadow Dance that Tron was very patiently waiting to pop and VP they're not close enough to share the heals with one another so they end up both going down Moscow 5 rotating quite a few heroes up to the top lane that's so far pretty much been part of the choruses they have been overwhelmingly uh, taking fights with the numbers as VP have been kind of scraping together some fights here and there trying to get numbers advantage but the teleportation support from from uh, Moscow 5 has certainly been giving them a nice advantage it's been costing them for sure because TPs are not free but as long as they take favorable fights or at least redeem deaths, they should be fine. It's going to be a bottom lane push from Cedoy pretty much by himself. And he will be able to take down that tower. We actually see a very early Hand of Midas from Vigos. Um, I don't mind Hand of Midas on Puck after Blink. But I think before Blink is just a little bit too risky. He and Cedoy are going to now pick a fight. Tron is here as well. There is no Ravage on Cedoy, but he does have help from the Necrophos. Has a Scythe as well. Will lay this heal onto Cedoy. Ice Path going to connect on two and a Coil on two as well. Cedoy is going to get a little bit more space, but he will go down. Now the Scythe onto the Slark will not kill him off because of the heal from the Undying. He does charge forward, trying to go for Necrophos. He's going to be farming up those zombies for status charges. In the meantime, Jotam has picked off the puck and he's going to be running home free. It's once again a one for one trade. This time it's fairly even. Yeah, I think the biggest difference between these two teams as far as the golden experience is concerned is just the amount of farm on either side. If you take a look at the last hits, Titans are leading the charge and the next highest on Moscow 5 is almost at about half of that Titanter and Vigas's puck. This Midas, I don't like it either, but maybe it's necessary just to make sure that they're able to keep up. But is it is it even going to do that? As everybody on the side of Virtus Pro seem to be getting the CS. And when you're trading evenly in kills, even if you lose God or BZZ every once in a while, it doesn't seem to be impacting their game plan much. They're still playing it very aggressively down in the bottom lane. We have a hood completed from the Necrophos um, with only Slark providing physical damage and Right now, he's not even providing that much of it. I actually really like this pick for Necrophos. He doesn't even have to build it into a pipe, although I'm sure that is going to be his build down the line. Uh, he could just sit on this and be safe in the fact that he is incredibly tanky. He gets extra value from the Death Pulse at the very least with this item. So he's going to be pretty tanky and very difficult for Moscow 5 to bring down, but they have been bringing him down. Even though you may have a hood, the enemy team has a Mystic Flare, and Mystic Flare pretty much trumps everything. So it is second, or not, this is not second nighttime phase. It is artificial nighttime phase. God, I guess he wants to get something going. He's going to teleport down to the bottom lane where he may be running into Unstable and King R. And this is a feeding frenzy for Night Stalker. He will be able to kill off the Skyrath Mage. Uh, Jakiro is a little bit tougher to kill, but he's going to spot them both out. First, the Void into King R. The cast not going to bounce. Actually, it will, in fact, bounce. King R is going to get beaten down. Scythe onto Unstable. They drop the Mystic Flare onto God. And this time, God gets away. The Death Ward still being channeled to blow your brain. He has the Tombstone on the floor. Now into the Flesh Golem form. He's going to get Chain Frosted, which won't bounce a single time. But I think they might have enough regardless with the Heartstopper Aura. It's going to be very close. No, he's going to live. Now pounce in from Tron. Going to go straight towards that Lich. Death Pulse Heal is going to help him a little bit. It might actually buy him enough time with the Voodoo Restoration coming in. Yes, Jotam's going to live, albeit barely. They're now going to try to chase down for this Slark and Puck at the same exact time. Vigos is going to jaunt himself out of there, and no one else from Moscow 5 is going to die surprisingly. Uh, actually, very surprised that the Lich managed to live through that. Vigos, he's completely out of mana, and if he had a Blink Dagger right now, he'll be fine, but unfortunately, he is going to get beaten down by God. Now getting two kills without <laughs> dying. Now going to try to go for King R. The Slark also in the area is going to go straight onto Yol. This time, Yol is going to be dying. Ravage a little bit too late, though it will slow down the Slark. They might actually have enough to get this kill. It's going to be very close. He has another pounce, but Blink, gosh, Cedoy is going to secure the kill, and VP take a whole bunch of kills home, and God's going to be very happy about that. He actually got kills without dying. Fantastic for him. It's well, the kill recap says 1-3, to three, but I'm pretty sure VP got a little bit more than that. Yeah, they also killed the Jakiro beforehand, and Undying's the only one to escape, and just barely to blow your brain surviving on like 30 HP. And this is a fairly late Vanguard coming up from the Night Stalker, but either way, for this point in the game, it's one of the most cost-efficient items that'll allow you to just push so aggressively into the enemy, and if you upgrade into the Crimson Guard, it scales a lot better than Vanguard used to, so I'm okay with this choice from G, even though he picks up the Ogre Club first, presumably wanting to go into the BKB. He finds himself with a large lump sum and will get a very effective item, at least for now. Inside the jungle, Zedoy as well as BCC find themselves in the table. Scythe will secure that kill, and now Jakira is down for a minute. 
And it'll juice Necrophos right back up to full mana, giving him 10 stacks of status. He has picked up the pipe, so now everyone on Virtus Pro is going to be extremely tanky. They're going to try to reinitiate this Moscow 5, knowing that there is no Scythe, there is no Ravage either. He's, he's going to take a truckload of damage, and even with the pipe, he's going to take a fall. Zombies are going to give chase to everyone. He's actually still alive. We'll finally go down. Cedoy with the Anchor Smash can try to buy himself a little bit more space. There is a coil, and they will drop it only onto this Tide Hunter, though I think that will secure the kill for the Moscow 5 side. That's where about God and Yol both coming in. It's going to be trying to take the first focus. He's silenced up, and he doesn't have the chance to purge it out. However, slow onto God. He's getting body blocked a little bit as well. Cast is now going to be channeled with the Death Ward. Blow your brain, though very, very tanky with all the strength he's stolen, plus the mech armor. He's going to turn around for a little bit more strength stolen, but he will go down in the end. Tron trying to reinitiate onto God. He can do quite a hefty bit of damage. God still alive, still alive, but now he's going to go down. Vanguard and Voodoo Restoration, not quite enough. Moscow 5 take a 2 for 3. They take down the Night Stalker and they take down the Necrophos. And as we saw, Mystic Flare trumps Pipe, even now. Yeah, Undying had like 5 stacks of strength and tank the majority of a Witch Doctor ultimate and then survives just barely. I think he ticked down to the urn. Maybe one auto attack coming up from the Night Stalker, but either way, it's quite a impressive show coming up from the Undying, just how tanky he is. And it's going to mean that Moscow 5... Come ahead as far as the kills are concerned, at least slightly. Tron going to find a jump in a Yol, but no way to cancel that TP. Witch Doctor should be fine back in the base. Jotam now over on the sidelines is also going to make himself scarce as showing up against this Slark is not a great way to go about doing things. We're going to have a pause coming up for the Witch Doctor, and hopefully it's not anything too major. Oh, well, he disconnected. I was just, just going to say, I think I had a little bit of ping there, but... We should be getting back into this relatively shortly, but it will give us a chance to check on the state of the game. Net worth and experience should be in favor of Virtus Pro. Translating that into, of course, said pipe mechanism is going to be built up by Jotam G. Don't know if he's going to be going straight for that Crimson Guard. It's a possibility, but going for a BKB seems to be a little bit more attractive for him, at least in this game. Cedar with a blink, and, well, the Witch Doctor is going to be building up towards his Aghanims in the meantime. For Moscow 5, the mech has been up, and it's certainly going to provide them with a nice little advantage for Blow Your Brain, but aside from that, they don't have any items, like, at all. There's Hand of Midas on the puck. He is very close to his blink, so we could say that he has a blink, but it's a pretty late one, and let's... It's going to guarantee some value for the puck, but I don't know. It just might be a little bit too late. Yeah, it really feels that way. Moscow 5, although in theory, Slark can carry this game fairly effectively. Slark has almost nothing. He has Power Treads Aquila, 1,200 gold. Puck, also nothing really to help him immediately. And for now, Virtus Pro, in theory, have better fighting potential as long as they're able to line all of their spells together. The biggest issue for them is that they've been taking really scrappy engagements. If they just started 5-manning, I think they'd be in a better position. I mean, both sides kind of want a 5-man. With a Ravage, with a Scythe, with Death Ward for VP, and then with Undying and Puck on Moscow 5. A full 5-on-5, five five, I mean, each team will have its certain advantages, but with a Tidehunter Ravage, that is like the 5-on-5 five five trump card. As strong as Undying is in those scenarios, I think Ravage just might be a little bit stronger. Yeah, for now, we are going to get back into this game, and everybody is in a pretty safe situation right now. There's not really any chance that we're going to see any immediate action. Um, yeah, it is for Pro making the more aggressive moves as far as farming is concerned, pushing a little bit more aggressively onto the enemy side of the map. Tron is down bottom, but even if they come into Ravage, I think it's unlikely they'll get a kill. They're going to go instead for Blow Your Brain up top. Tombstone down on the deck. They won't be able to focus that down. Now BCZ slowed very heavily under tower. Even with the pipe pop, the magic damage is just too strong, and now into G, they're going to go. Leash down to the ground. Ice path to follow up. Macro power as well. G is also going to take a spill, and Moscow 5 find themselves with two clean kills. And VP really can't afford to be doing that with just two heroes. Like, two heroes alone, probably not a good idea. Two heroes alone diving a tower, or getting into tower range, is an even worse idea. And Moscow 5 absolutely demolished them. That is going to be a little bit more gold, a little more, more momentum for the team, as they will bulldoze this tier 1 tower. Cedoy looking for a setup onto Vigas over in the mid lane. will open up with a gush, but there's no chance that they get this kill, unless they somehow land a cask, and good luck landing that one. Tower down in favor of M5, and, well, it's a much-needed tower is destruction, as they have... Actually, it's only one for one tower. It feels like a lot more towers are down. Either way, TP into the mid lane. It is going to be King R to throw a bolt onto Cedoy. They have no Night Stalker here, but BZZ is in the area with the pipe, and that might give VP enough to take a convincing fight, especially since they have Blink Ravage. That also helps. 
Yeah, we'll just have to see how this is going to break down. For now, Moscow 5 don't seem interested in taking engagement. The closest one's Shakiro, and he's already pretty far back. We'll drop a macro part just at the tip of the range in order to pull the creep aggro off. But this Tyrone Tower is still going to fall. Even though there's not any great pushing skills, they'll still be able to tank it up and take that fairly cleanly. Slark is pushing up top, although his pushing power, even with two range creeps and a catapult, can't really match that of the Dar team as long as they don't leave him alone for too long. And they're going to rotate up to him right away. Slark does have a TP, though, and he should be just fine. He actually is wielding a Yasha, so a lot of movement speed on the hero. Most likely, SNY is going to be picked up soon enough. It's um, not a terrible item on Slark. I feel like it's no matter what you get on Slark, you're going to be performing more or less the same. It feels that way. I think it's okay. I would have liked Blink maybe a little bit better, but they already have the initiation from the puck, so the extra stats might be even more useful. Still, Ravage is available, and smoke coming out from Jotam, <clears throat> or excuse me, Yol as well as Sido is going to find a Skyrath as well as the Jakiro. They drop the cast, going to bounce back and forth from the Undying. No, it goes to the neutral creeps, unfortunately for them. Heal up on the King Aris, only going to save him for a little bit as a solo Chain Frost is going to bounce through to these zombies, but they are magic meme and actually don't take anything from it. Tombstone going to be farmed as well. Ravage as well as the Chain Frost for one support pickoff. Probably not worth it for VP, unless they take this tier 2 tower immediately, and maybe if they find Vigos, it could be better, but no silence. Onto the Pocky will be able to jaunt to the orb, although incredibly slowed now blink away from Vigos is going to mean that he's safe. I think G could have prioritized that crippling fear a little higher. I thought for sure that they were going to get more kills there. I mean, you engage your Ravage with your Witch Doctor. The logical follow-up is you channel Death Ward and you probably get two kills out of it, but instead they only get one and that's a Skyrath Mage. It's not even like they kill off a Slark or something like that, so they might be able to get this tier 2, but it doesn't seem like it's that likely. They are forced to fall back as bottom lane is being pushed quite heavily by Tron. Teleportation back from Cedoy, waiting for a gush. We'll drop Tron pretty low, but now into the Shadow Dance TP. Literally nothing that VP can do about this, and they will be forced to let that Slark go. Really just messy engagements from VP. As you said, prioritizing Crippling Fear over the Void on the Puck should be a given. That obviously didn't happen. And then that was, of course, after taking a very awkward fight with Ravage used. It might be punishable by Moscow 5, but they have to go within this 70 seconds where Ravage is down. And that's pretty hard. I think even bigger is just that Virtus Pro are giving windows to Moscow 5 where they don't have to be. Slark has managed to catch himself up into this game by farming. Now we have a Dream Quill on a G, and it could be leaking even more heroes. He's fairly tanky, but with a Mystic Flare, he's not that tanky. Night Stalker is going to drop down and... Yet again, it's going to be Nightstalker giving up his life. He does purchase up the components for his Crimson Guard. He gets the buckler finished before he falls, but it's still an unnecessary pickoff that Virtus Pro didn't need to give, and that might actually tie up our uh, net worth as well as experience graphs. They're dangerously close to even. Right, and as this game progresses onwards, I don't know, VP have some pretty decent late game with the Necrophos. Nightstalker, as a late game hero, is kind of underwhelming, honestly. Like, he's tanky, he's disruptive. But he doesn't end up doing that much damage, especially when you go for a Crimson Guard. You're going to be more so a utility hero than anything else. BZZ is going straight for an Aghanim Scepter, which is certainly a devastating tool if he could land it on someone. But this is all going up against a Slark, given Slark doesn't have that much gold. He does have his SNY completed now flying out to him. A late game Slark is just so hard to deal with, no matter what heroes you have. Yeah, I mean, Tron isn't accessing that late game yet, but after the next couple of items, like Scotty, Basher, BKB, um, some mix of damage as well as survivability, it will be really hard for Virtus Pro to keep in place. And although he doesn't have the Black King bar yet, if you get it later, that 10 seconds can be crucial, and you can take out one or two targets very easily. Well, still VP. It's not quite night time, so they're going to take this time in order to get a couple more items up. Ideally, for BZZ, by the time nighttime does fall, he will have his completed Aghanim Scepter, but it looks like M5, they're not going to let that happen. Tron is going to circle around, and if he lands anything on Necrophos, that could very easily be a kill. If they save their coil, they have to save their coil. And Pipe is up. BZZ can take quite a bit of damage now into the woods. He's going to try to juke this one out, and he's going to get coiled. That is going to represent an opportunity for him to TP, but uh, he's going to go down. Tries to Scythe. 
Fortunately for him, it doesn't go on cooldown. Now here comes rotations in from VP. They're going to land a gush onto the puck. I don't think they have enough to kill him off. Actually, no, he doesn't have a blink, so they will be able to kill him off. And now, Tron actually moving outwards with Boyer Brain. Going to turn things around with Jotam. There is a nice Chain Frost, though, with the Ravage. Not quite going to be able to kill the Slark, although a gush will seal the deal. Jotam now on the way out. He is going to go down. Sidoy, the last one alive, has rotation coming in from Yol. But it looks like Moscow 5 no longer want to give chase. Nightstalker going to pop his ultimate. Coming around from the river. Blow your brain. Will straight TP out. I don't think King R is going to be as lucky. He doesn't even have a TP available for another 12 seconds. He's going to t get silenced. And then he's very slowly going to die. Actually very quickly going to die with the death ward. It's going to be a fight that does benefit Virtus Pro in the numbers. But that was also Ravage used and Chain Frost used. So getting anything else is going to be a little bit difficult. Although this tier 1 tower was kind of free to begin with. Yeah, that is going to be one of our last tier 1 towers remaining in the game. The last one actually is that tier 1 tower mid on the dire side. Um, but pushing further than this, I don't think is possible. Nine seconds up till Slark's alive again, and Skyrath is going to be soon to follow after. And then Skyrath has actually managed to find himself a decent chunk of farm. Now with a finished Atos at 24 minutes in for his support, is fairly valiant, especially since he died six times. And uh, it's going to be certainly very useful items for everyone, really. And because they don't have really clear late game advantage, it's all, a lot of it's going to come down to how many items these heroes have, and it's actually going to be double Atos. One for the Skywrath, one for the Undying, so everyone on VP going to be moving extremely slowly, but uh, I don't really know if this is going to be the end all for Moscow 5. I think four staves might have been a slightly higher priority. Regardless, we do see G invisible, and he's hunt hunting for pucks. If he opens up with silence, I think Puck might just be going down right now. There is no opening with silence, but he will get the void on him and silence regardless. And now Puck should be going down. Yeah, that silence is obnoxiously long at night. Eight seconds for a Puck feels like an eternity and it is going to end his life. Witch Doctor also picking up a really big ticket item in that Aghanim Scepter. And he might just be that... <clears throat> da um, damage potential they've been missing, especially if they find a good Ravage. Ultimate on the Blow Your Brain, shredding good bits just with a paralyzing cask bouncing once or twice. That's all that you'll need. The shiny new Aghanim Scepter, not showing any bouncing just yet, but uh, Undying will take a very swift fall, and Ravage cooldown up in 15. It is still nighttime, a fresh nighttime as well, and it's a couple of kills, leaving Moscow 5's defenses a little bit weaker in this tier 2 tower. Already previously took about one-fourth of its damage, actually almost exactly one-fourth of its health. Uh, it will very quickly be pushed down now by VP. Again, they don't have the most pushing power, but if Moscow 5 want to fight this, then VP are going to win that fight. More or less. The only thing they're down is that Witch Doctor Ultimate, but they have plenty of team fighting potential. And it is going to be Tidehunter to get that tower destruction, and even more Aghanim Scepters being purchased up by them. Now one for BZZ. Virtus Pro, they're finding a little bit more momentum in this game. Just getting a couple of kills, and even though they're down the kills this time, they're able to transition those into tower pushes where Moscow 5 isn't. Necrophos still rotating down to the bottom lane. Unstable does have a TP out, and it looks like he will be just fine. Roshan is going to be very difficult for, honestly, both teams to kill off. Maybe a little bit easier for M5 since they have a Liquid Fire Jakiro to work with, but it's going to be VP to start things off. I guess they do have Gush, so... That additional minus armor may swing it, and they have ice armor, so they have quite a bit of bulk. However, here comes Moscow 5. You really never want to be fighting up against an Undying in the Roche Pit. Probably the worst court is to do so. Jakiro and Puck very similar, so if Moscow 5 actually spot this one out, they can crash this really hard already into the Flesh Golem. Tombstone is going to drop. They have to focus Tombstone down, but instead it's going to be Crimson Guard up, and the Death Ward being channeled from the Roshan Pit is going to be interrupted by Roshan, and a Coil. Y'all is not going to get that full channel off. Regardless, Chain Frost is still bouncing through. Blur Brain is going to go down. G dropping low for VP, but everyone else is going to survive at relatively safe amounts of HP. The Crimson Guard, Pipe, and the healing combo from VP is overwhelming, even with the opening that Moscow 5 really would have wanted, and the bash on to Yol. It worked out so well for VP because of those extra items. Yeah, and that's pretty crazy. Just the amount of sustain they're able to put out inside the fight. They also have the mechanism on the Lich, the Death Pulse, the Voodoo Restoration. It's really hard to deal with. The burst damage combo from the Skyrath Mage up until this point has been enough to kill off targets instantly, but... That's going to start to fade away. Night Sucker's not in going to go for the BKB and instead going to complete a Heaven's Halberd very shortly. Tower Denial in mid is going to come out from Virtus Pro to further deal some economic damage to Moscow 5. 
Um, I really don't like this pickup of the Heaven Sauber coming up from Night Stalker, and it's not really going to help him up top as he's getting gone on by the Slark as well as the Jakiro, and he'll be first down, losing the Aegis. He will be coming back, and I suppose that's what Aegis is for, just losing your life, but I don't know. It's pretty much a waste. Well, Tron's not going to leave just yet, although I think he will try to TP out once he uh, does have that available. Yeah, Heaven's Halberd is okay. It's never really bad, but who are you going to disarm? The Slark? Death Pact? Oh, Dark Pact. He's going to say no to that, so I don't really like this for the Night Stalker. I think either BKB or even just turning that... Uh, Turning that Ogre Club into a straight Aghanim Scepter would have been better. Regardless, what's done is done, and he is going to have that disarm, and he will be very tanky moving forward, but really there's no reason for Moscow 5 to focus this Night Stalker really at all. I mean, he's not doing that much damage. So, a little bit of an awkward item situation there from VP, but I think that's going to be fine. G's still getting a decent amount of gold, so maybe he could transition that into more straightforward items a little bit down the line. The more surprising thing for me is that Jakira only has one point liquid fire, and I don't think I've seen this, well, not for like Radiant several months at the very the least, maybe even years. He's going to be on the run from BZZ and Cdoy. He is packing a TP scroll, though. Scythe can interrupt this. Scythe is going to kill him off. Yep, and that's going to be Jakira down for 72 seconds as BZZ also gets that regeneration to mean that that kill didn't cost him very much effective mana at all. Um, so using Scythe through Jakira, it's not the best option for them, but it's going to secure the kill, and there's not really much else that they needed to do. And what else would that Scythe be accomplishing if it was just sitting in his... <clears throat> uh, sitting unused and... Oh my goodness, I can't find my warrants for the life of me. Um, but for now, it is going to be Virtus Pro to be grouping up a little bit, pushing down bottom as well as down mid. There's no two towers for them to take in middle lane, but they might be able to swing down towards bottom and take that tower. Pushing high ground at this juncture is pretty difficult without a pickoff, um, so they might shy away from that, especially with the lack of pushing that they have. And especially since they previously just used their Aegis on pretty much nothing. A refresher orb, though. That's an item that helps you push high ground, I suppose. If you could force Moscow's Moscow 5's hand into a full 5 and 5 team fight, they will have double ravage, and very shortly they'll have a scythe as well. Scything off and killing off someone like a puck or a slark can very easily open up the base to you. G is going to be focused first and foremost, but they do have a lot of sustain behind him. Level 4 Voodoo Restoration, Vigos going to jump in. Prompt the Crimson Guard pop from G, which is probably going to do nothing except for protect himself against the tower for a little bit. But Crimson Guard down and Moscow 5, they still have to worry about this push, but they're getting pressure up on top lane in the meantime. Yeah, but is that pressure going to be enough? They'll get the tier 2 tower at the very least, but jump into the base, they're going to silence up unstable. Now for the second time, he's going to die to the side. Jakiro is down, he can't get up. Now G is silenced up, going to be eating the Mystic Flare, but a 4 staff will keep himself safe. BKB purchased by the Slark, and for now Virtus Pro are going to be repelled since they don't have a creep wave, but they can go in again. They have double ravage up, and they're itching to use it. They don't have a scythe, which is one of their main killing tools, but the enemy team doesn't have a Jakiro. That's a lot of magic damage. A lot, lot of magic damage down the drain. Vigos is going to jump in for a quick silence, but the Death Pulse spam is going to keep everyone on VP rather sustained. They don't really have a great creep wave to work with, as Orbs and silences from Puck is very good at killing that off, but they're going to prop the the fortification from the tower, and now they're thinking about dropping a Mystic Flare onto BZZ. Nighttime is going to end, and with that, they can no longer afford to push VP, or at least there's no point in doing so. It looks like they are going to make a clean retreat, however, so it really doesn't cost them that much. They get a lot of damage onto the tower, and uh, they force the fortification. In the next nighttime phase, I'm sure they'll try to go for the Raxes. Yeah, I think that's fair. Right now, let's see if they're going to lose anybody on the retreat. They spot out Yol, and Vigos is going to jaunt to that orb, although it's not the safest places for him to be in, and can't cleanly get that Wish Doctor kill. There is a Ravage committed only at a Tron, but with the Lich Ultimate as well as the Death Ward, he's going to be forced to use his ultimate on top of it. There is a gem on the deck as well as that Dark or um, Shadow Dance being used by Tron. He should be able to make a clean retreat out here, although the Buy Box coming out from Cedoy is now caught in a quarter, and the Scythe will do him in. Slark just found himself in a really awkward spot. Ice Path going to be immediately purged off by that Kraken Shell coming out from Cedoy as he continues to pursue, but a dual breath from the Jakiro should end that from Cedoy, and that's going to be it. Even though he does have a Refresher Orb, Tidehunter does never really want to use a Ravage in a situation like that, only connecting onto the Slark, which obviously didn't really do that much, although they did kill him off in the end. The Ravage was not the reason of it. 
But they did get the scythe kill on the Slarkin. That is really the takeaway for VP. They still have a Ravage. They don't have a scythe, but they're going to dive straight for Blow Your Brain. Gush going to drop him low to start things off. Coil's going to land onto two. And now a Mystic Flare onto BZZ. The Summon Force Staff's not going to save him. Ravage a little bit too late as well. And they're just going to try to go for it. But Yol does not have the Death Ward. Vigos still tanking through all this. And a beautiful Ice Path from Unstable. Going to keep Vigos safe for just a little while longer. Cedoy can get focused down by King R and Unstable. Both Yol with the healing working. It's not going to be quite enough as Cedoy does not manage to connect with his TP. He's now left behind by the rest of his team. Will force staff down to the low ground. That might be his escape if he blinks up to the high ground. And he will. I think the Tidehunter may be home free. But Puck and Slark should be actually just Puck. There's going to give chase and Cedoy. I don't really know if he has quite enough. He should be able to outmaneuver this Puck and Unstable combination. V, they take the Tier 3 tower, but it's really, really expensive. That flare has been backbreaking so far. Cedoy is going to be caught up on by Vigos. Jonam is here to support with the mech, and they're going to try to turn things around on this Puck. The damage is just enough to kill off the Puck, and Puck bit off way more than he could chew. King R from the side is going to want to land the Mystic Flare onto Jotam, and it looks like he may be able to get this kill, although with just a couple of bolts, it'll do it. Now going to try to straight TP out. Nothing to interrupt that. This Skyrath Mage is doing a hell of a lot of damage with all the intelligence he has. Yeah. What's a poor staff? The Intreds, Null Talisman, Atos. He's sitting at about 135 or so. And that's going to be working so well for them. The Arcane Bolts are really starting to add up. And then the Mystic Flare inside the team fights, focus down those key targets. His positioning has been pretty darn good. Even though he's died seven times... It's been enough to keep the high ground held, but for now, everybody on the side of DP, or at least the three cores, are above the three cores coming out from Moscow 5, and they just seem to be scaling quite a bit better. Slark has gone into BKB after the S and Y, but it's a fairly damaged light build coming out from him, and now he's going to be side. It won't instantly kill him off. He's able to get to BKB, try to TP out. He is invised up, and he'll be able to make his escape. That's very close. I mean, I wouldn't expect the Necrophos and Night Stalker to be able to do that, but Shit, they got so close to outright just killing that Slark. Scythe is Aghanim, so it is doing that little bit of additional damage as compo as compared to a regular Aghanim Sept or a regular Necrophos Scythe. So there is that to consider. But still, that was a lot of burst damage. If, ne if Night Soccer had just a little bit more, they could have potentially gotten that kill. Jakiro on the run from Yol. I think Cast is going to be in time. No, Yol is not going to be able to cast that spell, and Jakiro does make a clean escape. But uh, not really going to be a huge deal. I mean, they have this darkness still up. It's going to very quickly wear out. I don't know what time it is really in game. Uh, it should be close to nighttime, though, or close to real nighttime, if not just regular nighttime. Uh, we're about halfway to the next nighttime phase, so a little more farm time for VP. They have the double ravages up, and maybe if all things go well for them, they'll have a Roshan as well if they want to go for this next push. Yeah, or even a pick off on like the Slark or the Puck. Puck going to be able to blink towards the north and should be able to jump to his orb, potentially keeping himself safe. Although Vigos is now without his loser, but long range paralyzing cask is going to be phase shift dodged, and Vigos is going to survive. Yol is still pursuing for some reason, but there is a Tidehunter on the low ground. Might be able to set this up. Does he get an anchor smash? There is another jaunt available. No way to silence out Puck. He doesn't make it up to the high ground, but he's trying for the TP out. No scythe in time. BZZ mid animation. He'll be able to make it back to base. I don't even know if the scythe was going to kill. Well, maybe with the Dagon next time, it will be able to kill. But uh, the puck was rather healthy there. Necrophos would have been right on the edge and unable to get any closer. So VP, they make a clean escape with their puck. Performing a couple of magic tricks to get out of that one. But still, it is a concerning moment right now. They're going to pop the darkness for something. I don't know. I mean, it is a level 3 ultimate, so it does last for a hell of a long time. But it's not actually real nighttime right now so it will be a momentary lapse of daytime while they are potentially going for Roshan it's going to be a very short one as it is going to pop up very shortly but BZZ is going to be in quite a bit of trouble down on bottom lane probably the worst time for him to die if he is going to die at all they're going to jump for Mystic Flare no Yule Scepter miss layer now BZZ is going to be perfectly fine and the Death Ward is going to be channeled cutting through everyone like a hot knife through butter the Slark is going to straight TP out of this but it's going to be the Jakiro and Undying both to die Chain Frost still bouncing, and it looks like that's going to be BZZ going down in the end. But it's still a two for one, and that's a two for one that VP can Roche off of. Yeah, it's not ideal for them, but they're going to have their Necrophos in 50 seconds. They get yet another Tower Deny, I believe the third of the game. Necrophos just taking too much damage after that Yule Scepter wore off. I thought that might have saved his life, but just not enough four staffs on his team to get him out to safety. They had one, but that was about it. Now into the Roshan, they're going to go with G as well as Sedoi and Yule. It's not the fastest Roshan, but it should be sustainable. 
especially since Moss got five. Down two heroes. Gonna just try to split push the top lane. Try to get something or some sort of semblance of pressure while VP are very clearly doing Roshan. There's no way Moscow 5 can contest. Necrophos will be up by the time they need him. And now with the double life, I'm going to assume going to be given to the Night Stalker. Uh, the high ground push from VP is looking pretty good. Cedoy still has a double ravage. Didn't actually use a single one in that last fight. And they have a double life on the... Someone? Where's the Aegis? It's being so sat upon. Yep. Okay. Oh, they're just holding it for BZZ. I mean, if I can't see it, that clearly means an invisible random hero from Moscow 5 can't see it either. So, Necrophos now with a double life. And they are going to probably go for a straight push, maybe after cleaning top lane. We'll just have to see. They now have the Salt Kuras on the Night Stalker, going to be buffing up his team's pushing potential as well as his own damage. And some nice survivability up against the Slark. I think it's a really important pickup for Virtus Pro. And now let's see where they're going to group. They do have the double Ravage available in Darkness. It's being spammed pretty liberally by G, and that's going to make sure that nighttime is going to be the majority of the time, which is really annoying for Moscow 5, if for nothing else, for the map vision, and might make them reconsider doing what Unstable is doing up top, but he's completely pushing it out. <clears throat> with the macro pirate even committed in order to clear out the creep wave that much faster. They need to get back to their base, however. Tier 3 tower has already been taken previously, and they'll be able to move into these ranged and melee barracks. They're going to focus on the range to start out. This is permanent chip damage, and it might be more than chip. They'll take it down to below half before the glyph even pops. Are Moscow 5 really trying to race this? They're going to lose range racks before they even bring the tower down to half HP. They will bring down the tier 3 in the end, but I don't think this is a race that they can really take. G is going to get Mystic Flare, though, taking quite a bit of damage. Really wish he had an Aegis right now. Scythe onto Vigos will be his doom. And now Puck down. They're going to now go for the Melee Raxes over towards top lane, though. Tron, Blair Brain unstable. Going to get the upper hand in that one. It looks like Melee Raxes are going to be taken for both sides. So it's one half or one racks in exchange for half racks. Blow your brain. Gonna try to escape, but G's going to chase him down. It's probably the best bet that Moscow 5 could have potentially had, but they're still fighting over towards mid. Tron is going to kill off the Lich. Will not be able to pursue BZZ. Uh, it's still a nice like, exchange for Moscow 5, as they probably couldn't have gotten much better. Uh, Tron is actually chasing for for BZZ. If he gets this kill, it could be huge, but Aegis and Blink Dagger, you're not going to catch up to this Necrophos. And VP, it's one set for half a set. Though it is the melee raxes, they can p conceivably go for more once their Tide Hunter has a double ravage again. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be quite a long time before they have both of the ravages to commit. When you only use one, it's kind of nice to just have that insurance so that you'll know that you'll have it available. But then again, you're still kind of in the same state if you had used it. You don't want to be forcing any issues because you do want to have both of them at the same time to get that huge, almost... Five seconds, more than five seconds of disable on everybody on the enemy team. If you can line up uh, <clears throat> five man ravage. Let's see. Darkness is being used currently, and the vision oh, from Moscow 5 is very limited, but they will <clears throat> jump on to both Sedoy as well as BCC. Blowing up Sedoy first. BCC still has his Aegis, and he might be losing it here. Yule Scepter will keep Witch Doctor safe for a little bit longer as they try to focus down this Necropost's first life, but the channeling from Yule can't be stopped. The BKB is being he's doing too much damage, but now bashed down by Tron, they will be able to get the Witch Doctor out of this fight, and although low, they'll now pursue down BZZ. Aegis has already spent trying to get a kill into Tron beforehand. The Sadist regen is not going to be off, although he does get the Scythe kill onto the uh, Slark. It's still a 3 for 1 trade in favor of Moscow 5, but losing the Slark represents most of their pushing power. Jakiro is in the base, so he can't contribute to the bottom lane push at all. As nice as it is to have an Aghanim Scepter level 3 Witch Doctor ultimate, you really need the enemies to stay in one place, which is why we're so heavily recommending a Faceless Void pick in the draft. And it really showed that they cannot actually do that much damage with this Death Ward unless they have Lockdown. That's clearly not the case. Top lane unstable, just messing with G right now. We throw a couple of skills his way, but Night Stalker's not going to die, nor is the Jakira. Although G's going to turn around, start going into him. He gets hexed by Vigos. Now Pig has got to run away. Still has that Disarm, and he will use it onto Puck as he tries to run off to the right. You're not going to catch up to a Night Stalker very easily. However, the Undying... Is running intercept. There's gonna find a regen on this Night Stalker. No, he gets slowed down. Now the Night Stalker is going to fall. Player Brain in the right place at the right time, offering that additional slow, and that's four down for VP total. They will be up in 75 seconds, and they still have a Rax advantage. But these are the type of fights that VP really can't afford to take. Yeah, it really isn't.
Tide Hunter is going to have his double ravage up in 10 seconds, and VP will be fighting if they need to with full forces. Even if they push in the next minute, Night Striker does have buyback available. Had that Slark not died, however, it could have been disastrous for VP, at least losing his range barracks up top, but in the meantime, it's Ichikiro getting Dagon Scythe down. Hmm. Jikiro alone is not a very tanky hero at this point in the game, especially to a Dagon Necrophos. And it's not the most important hero for Moscow, for uh, VP to be picking off right now, but it doesn't seem like anything is going to be happening in the meantime, so you might as well get Scythe value wherever you can. Now it's going to be a Dagon 5, I think. No, it's only level 4. 4 and 5 always look so similar. Uh, Dagon 4 on the Necrophos. He is pretty damn tanky, and he will be able to almost solo kill anyone. A Dagon Blast into a scythe with a little bit of help should be able to bring anyone down assuming no bkbs and currently slark is the only one to pack that item vigos and king are they're looking for an opening they're going to find bzz mystic flare is going to be dropped onto this necrophos definitely not tanky enough to withstand all of that even with that pipe he needs more health if he's going to survive that next time although he's down for 80 seconds with no buyback next time is going to be a very long way away Right now, Nightstark Ultimate used again, but he's nowhere close. They're pursuing the puck up towards top, but Jaunt away into the trees. Blink away TP out from Vigos will keep himself safe. No way for them to cancel that. Zidoy is going to blink over, looking for the puck, just making sure that he's gone, and he will find that the puck has already made his escape. Scarf Mage, not so lucky. His TP is still cooling down. We'll have that in five seconds, and probably will be forced to spend it. Although, actually, with nobody close, they've smoked up and made their way towards another lane. Huh, Scarth Mage is just going to stick around. Okay, there we go. He's going to make his way back into the well. In the meantime, bottom lane, Tron split pushing that one out. Just trying to delay VP, as VP do have both of their Ravages available. They would, on paper, be looking for a high ground push, but not when their lanes are not really cooperating with them. Roshan not going to be up for another four-ish minutes. I believe that was the timer that it said. So it's going to be a while before VP can actually pull themselves together and by the time they are actually all alive with all their ultimates and everything like that, they will... Oh, hold on, because King R is going to get jumped, Death Ward, and Chain Frost. My god, Scarath Mage probably doesn't deserve that. He's going to buy himself a little bit more space. Dropping a Mystic Flare into Jotun will actually get a Retaliation kill, though Scarath Mage is going to go down in the end. It's certainly a very nice exchange for him. Puck is going to jaunt off to the right. Looks like he will straight TP out and be just fine. It's going to be a one-for-one one in the end. No Death Ward, no Chain Frost. And still, Moscow 5 are keeping the lanes pushed out, so VP... They're running out of nighttime right now, and I don't think this is going to cooperate with them. Yeah, neither do I. Yeah, that Lich dying is going to mean that Skyrath Mage finds himself a really favorable trade, spending two of some very high-quality ultimates, or high-priority, my goodness, in the team fights uh, to get that kill. It's going to mean neither team are really interested in pushing, and we're still at this awkward standoff moment where... VP, they're getting some decent farm on all of their cores, but Moscow 5 or no slash is either. Slark, now with the Basher on top of his BKB, Sanjin Yasha is starting to hit pretty hard, and he's going to get an Abyssal before too long as well. Night Stalker Darkness is going to mean that for more than 50% of the time, we are sitting in darkness, but they are going to get the BKB off on Tron before the Ravage, as well as the Reaper Scythe, and that's going to do almost nothing to him. Tron going to eat the Dagon Blast after the BKB wears off, but it actually doesn't matter. It gets his ultimate, runs towards the north, and now BZZ caught inside the Ice Path is going to be in a bit of problems here. Blow your brain's going to be able to make it back to base. There's no void is available for the Night Stalker. They'll clean up <clears throat> excuse me, that tombstone, but that's about it. The Witch Doctor dies down in bottom to Vigas. Man, these trades for VP are just getting worse and worse. Ravage and Scythe hitting squarely onto a BKB to target. It is hard to kill a Slark, even without that BKB. Once he does have that item, you have to be so very careful. And VP don't really have many items that could surprise stun him, with the exception of a random blinking scythe, but obviously that's not going to happen when it's the Slark that's running into you, so they need something else if they want to kill off this Slark. They'll have a scythe up very soon, it's not the highest cooldown skill in the game, but uh, if they keep running these spells into Vigos, or into, uh, into Tron rather, it's just going to hurt them more and more, and speaking of hurting more and more, G on the bottom lane is going to get Mystic Flare. This Mystic Flare has just been MVP for King R and Moscow 5 in general this entire game. It has been probably doing the most damage out of all their heroes. Probably. Always find some really nice angles to where VP can't actually move, and Night Stalker buys back instantly, wants some revenge. It is, is time of the night, and he's not going to be able to find anything. It's... A little bit of a questionable buyback. It is going to be VP fighting with full force, but Moscow 5 finding a really big gold swing into their favor. 
Slark, his next item isn't completed yet, sitting on 5,000 gold. He's getting close to the point where he can purchase up that Abyssal as well as that buyback. But in the meantime, Blow Your Brain is getting blown up now with the Scythe to secure that kill, undying on the deck for 100 seconds. And somehow Scarth Mage farms himself an Ethereal Blade. Well, I mean, he does have 13 kills and 12 assists. And now a Dagon on Puck, so the Ethereal Blade Dagon combo is real. That will require a little bit of setup from King R. Uh, King R can probably kill off anyone with the help of Puck, uh, with the help of Puck's sheep. Doesn't even need the Dagon, honestly. Uh, the Scarf Mage damage output is quite frankly insane at this stage of the game. He's going to try to go for a solo kill onto Seedoy. It's going to be pretty hard when the Force Staff is actually used, you can't get that kill. Now straight TP out from the Scarf Mage, gets hexed by once again that cheap stick. Fresh from Seedoy is going to kill off King R at the very least. Dagon Blast going to secure that kill. Nighttime still is up and G going to start running towards Tron. Not much mana on this Lark. In fact, he cannot use his Shadow Dance. G should know about this and he's getting body blocked. However, this Lark is going to make an escape. Not the cleanest, but hey, he's going to survive. Roshan is up, however, and Mem5 are down two of their heroes. VP should secure this one in a hurry. Yeah, and it seems that they will be able to. They have double ravage, or double ravage in 15 seconds, I should say, as the refresher is still cooling down. They'll be able to take this before Moscow 5 have the chance to react, and the only one close is Vigas, and as a solo puck, can't really do the trick. Slark is going to decide to go for a Scotty instead. He has that item completed, but now without buyback, that could be pretty crucial. No Aghanim, or with the Aghanim Scepter on the Necrophos, excuse me, Slark is going to decide to not save for it. I think that's an okay choice, although risky if somebody else kills him. Yeah, well, uh, it is certainly... It's hard to play around the scythe, so you might as well just YOLO it and figure, I might as well just buy whatever I can, because I'm going to die to the scythe anyway. It's There's no real correct way to play around a reaper scythe in that regard but uh, whatever he will have a lot of bulk and he's already very difficult to bring down top lane oh Jakiro still sticking around is going to run straight into the necrophos does necrophos realize did they not see each other okay now they definitely see each other and the Jakiro has a four step out blink forward from the necrophos still giving chase but he's slower because of the yule scepter now here comes Tron with the yule scepter and the sheep stick from the puck BZZ is going to take a very slow fall. He's still alive. Going to turn around for Scythe. Onto Vigos. Give me the death of the puck. BZZ is still alive. Is finally going to go down. Now Tron hexed up. He will purge that out immediately. Ravage number two is going to be committed. Tron and Unstable both going to hit with that one. But there's no real follow-up. Where is this Night Stalker? He's very swiftly coming in. But I don't know if it's going to be in time. Tron with a lot of mana and a lot of time to escape. He will not die to the last tick of Maledic. Now healing up and teleporting out in the trees. G is instead going to settle for a blow your brain. And I think this might be the only casualty left for Moscow 5, although TP Outcast is going to interrupt that, and now one dying is pretty much dog meat. He is going to go down VP, though, end up losing the Necrophos, and I don't know if they can push it up their Necrophos. Yeah, I think that's fair. It could have been a lot worse for Moscow 5 had <clears throat> Unstable not landed a four-man Ice Path um, to stop that push, but the tier 2 tower, at the very least, should be falling in the favor of VP, even though they can't go for high ground without the Necrophos, pushing tier 2s is fairly easy. So they're going to take that one with no response from Moscow 5. This Lark, though, still alive and really showing off his power. VP, can they go for more? They have no Ravages, though a Blink Scythe is potentially very devastating. They are working with a 4v5 advantage. I don't really think they could do this because Cedoy is going to get Chain Stunned up, and now the Bashes are going to start to commence. Slark doing so much damage, even after the Anchor Smash. Cedoy is still alive for now, but now he's going to die. Tron sees Yul as well, and Yul's going to try to hide in the trees. I don't really know if he could escape this one. Doesn't seem like he can. And now Mystic Flare, just to ensure that he can't, it's going to be a double kill for Tron. And BP pushing way too aggressively without the proper support there. Mid lane's in full breach for Moscow 5, but it's not going to bother them too much as they know that they are now working with a number advantage. And they will try to force buybacks from the Tide and the Witch Doctor, though they will quickly find out that there are no buybacks to be purchased, uh, to be forced out. Yeah, Slark in that fight, he ends up with like 28 stacks of Essence Shift, which is quite honestly pretty ridiculous. And Virtus Poe just not respecting Slark's ability to fight, even though they were down their pucks throughout that, they will have him back up now, and it looks like they're going to push down the top lane, although mid and bottom are not in their favor. Slark down and bottom being stalked by BZZ as well as the Night Stalker, but they shouldn't be able to find him, and even if they do, I think Pounce will keep Tron safe, unless he's not fast enough. No silence coming out. They're going to wait for the Purge. No, he drops it during the Purge. Is a fax, and now Tron going to go strong to G, but he's doing very little damage to none. 
until Essence just starts stacking up majorly. He's going to be able to do nothing. Blink for its side. They don't get the Dagon off, however, and Scythe hardly tickles Tron. Now with the ultimate pop, he's going to go into BZZ with the Bashes as well as the Dagon coming up. Fuck, it's going to be enough. Vigoth's going to get healed by the Undying. Now focusing down G. This time, they are doing enough damage. Pounce through by Tron. 39, 40. 42 stacks of essence shift hitting with a modest 300 base damage or thereabouts and now g coming back into this is not going to survive he is going to be silenced up and brought down by the undying soul rip it's going to be a three for nothing man night stalker misplays all day long that's not even the first time that happened you have to wait until you see that pact being used until you use crippling fear i mean you do you are capable of sticking with that Slark typically, and with the Aghanim Scepter Vision, you're not going to get out juked and during nighttime. That's just not going to happen, but VP, they end up losing three because Moscow 5, well, they quite frankly just bait them into a terrible, terrible fight. And VP off of a couple misplays are going to now have their base under siege. Top lane, Rax is still looking pretty tasty, but they're going to instead go for bottom. There is double Ravage and a Death Ward. I don't think that's enough to defend this, although, you know, the Dream is certainly there. If Necrophos doesn't buy back, then this is going to be Rax is taken at the very least. Fortification is going to pop. Necrophos going to buy back into this game. And they have Ravage number one going to connect onto pretty much everyone. Ravage number two. And now the Death Ward King R. Tron both going to take a fall. And now Blurry Brain, the only remaining survivor. They're also going to try to chase down Vigos. However, he will actually go down to the Heartstopper aura. The Undying and Jakiro are the only ones to survive. VP, they keep hold of their Raxes. Apparently, Double Ravage and Death Ward is quite enough. Yeah, it is. The first Ravage didn't do much, but by time to get VP in position, but that second Ravage with the Death Ward was really good. And now Slark, even though he has the money for it, can't buy back since he did die to that Reaper Scythe and down for 100 seconds. We now have the full Dagon 5 purchased up by the Necrophos. Blink Dagon on the Witch Doctor is going to mean that getting in position for that Death Ward is so much easier. And <laughs> suddenly it's Virtus Pro now to have the advantage. And their turn to push down a lane. They're going to go down mid and potentially swing up towards top, as that's where they've already taken the tier two. I don't know if I've ever seen a game that's lasted this long that has been this even. We have almost a zero net worth advantage for either side. That's insane. Yeah, I've seen some that are kind of close to this, but right now it's at 55 minutes in, zero net worth almost. It's getting very close. Experience slight advantage towards the radiant side but it doesn't matter now that they're going to be losing their second lane of barracks because they just can't contest it's Jakiro and undying versus the world and they probably shouldn't even try no ravages no death ward doesn't matter they do have death ward now but melee barracks being focused down they'll be the first to fall in range barracks soon after they found on the back line Jakiro he stepped up too close the scythe isn't going to do him in but Yule Scepter is only going to delay the inevitable gets the scythe off before he falls as well but now Yule channeling the ultimate inside the base cancelled by his silence and his insolence is going to be ended that was cheeky by the Witch Doctor, but I suppose it's space created for the top lane push. Unfortunately, the tier 2 on the bottom lane is still surviving, so going for Megas right now, not quite possible for VP as Vigos does get back into this game. Dagon Blast going to drop the puck fairly low. BZZ, though, has the cheese and Seedoy. Oh, they're both going to share the Mystic Flare. Lots of damage onto BZZ. He will cheese and survive. And now Blow Your Brain, awkwardly alone amongst a whole lot of VP heroes, is going to be beaten to death. Slark, though, is going to respawn shortly, and top lane is in full breach for VP. They have taken yet another set of Raxes. They have to worry about bottom lane tier 2 before they can take Megas. But overall, it's a nice series of wins for them. Slark, is he powerful enough to actually hold this all back? He needs to just buy out. As nice as having buyback is, it's a reasonable assumption that to say that he's not going to have the chance with the Scythe in the field. Yeah, I think they just need any amount of damage or potential to take fights. The Abyssal Blade, I think, is almost completely mandatory. And even if he doesn't go for it, just any big ticket item, because 5,000 gold, although it's nice to have, does nothing inside your inventory. And it looks like he is going to purchase up that Abyssal. And Roshan timer is currently unknown. However, the Night Stalker is in the area, is going to now see Vigos. That Aghanim Scepter, rather late for the Night Stalker, but still providing him some serious value, is going to be spotting out King R as well. He is capable of turning things around and really demolishing the Night Stalker if push comes to shove, but... VP, they're going to just very safely take a tier two. I mean, it's almost dead anyway, so they might as well. And, uh, well, Abyssal Blade from the Slark, this is certainly going to be a useful item for him, but I don't know if it's quite going to be enough. Again, if he drops to half HP with the Scythe, he's just dead, and it's going to be a very short Roshan timer for VP. This is very lucky for them, as if they could just dip into the Roshan pit, kill it off, and then push high ground once again, try to go for Megas with Aegis. 
Or they could just go without it. Full 5-on-5? Five five? I guess they have double Ravage Death Ward. You might as well try it. Right now, the two guitar is going to be the first thing to be focused. Although the creep wave's down and they might reconsider their option and go back into the Roshan pit. I think that's just the safer way to do things and it looks like that's going to be their choice. Alright, so they don't know, of course, that Roshan is up yet because, well, it's not. But G has that pseudo map vision hack. Uh, well, not anymore. Why does the game always have to prove me wrong as soon as I say something? Roshan is now up just as daytime breaks. So, unfortunately for VP, they will not know about this. Although, they should be constantly scouting it. Especially when you have an, in, uh, an illusion rune. No, G. Send those illusions the other way. Well, I mean, I'm sure they'll get to it eventually. But, nighttime is almost going to fall naturally. And that is pretty scary to think about. That VP have been taking all these fights with artificial nighttime. Yeah, it is. And it's... One of the strengths of having that level 16 ult, but it makes Tide Sucker a little bit less irrelevant in the late game. They will spot out that Roshan, and now it's only a matter of time till they take it. I doubt Moscow 5 are going to try to contest inside this pit with Double Ravage, as well as with Reduced Vision. It's just so scary. Alright, so Moscow 5, what can they do while this is happening? They're going to try to push out the top lane. They have a tier 2 mid to worry about, and bot lane is really in no condition to be pushing towards the dire base. So, as far as trades in sight... I mean, maybe they push back the top lane enough to force someone from VP to get back there. But now, another Aegis on Necrophos, Cheese on the Night Stalker. And already the bottom lane is pretty much in full reach for Moscow 5. They have to send a couple heroes to deal with that. In the meantime, the rest of VP are going to moving over towards the bottom lane, I expect. Uh, taking a roundabout route for sure, but they will get there eventually. They're okay with letting their base take a little, couple of hits because they're just going to look to end the game right away. Boyer Brain is going to get chains done to start things off. Hex as well. No sight just yet, but Ravage number one is going to be used. Connecting onto two. Death Ward is also going to be channeled. It will be stunned out by the Tron Abyssal Blade. Ravage number two still available. G going to get hit with the Mystic Flare. Still has a cheese. Ravage number two now going to connect onto four with the Chain Frost as well. Tron is going to get Scythe. That has got to be a good game. In the meantime, Chain Frost will also kill off the Jakiro in the back end. Scarf made limps out of there. But they cannot hold any longer. Moscow 5 have got to tap out. VP take the series 2-0. And oh, maybe one more for the road. King R is going to go down as the last casualty. VP end the game with a full five-man sweep. And that, guys, is going to end the series between Moscow 5 and Virtus Pro. With Virtus Pro taking it 2-0. We have one more series of the day. It's going to be M5 versus Drac something. Uh, yeah, so that should be interesting. I think there are a different team that I know by a different name, but we will, uh, it's Album Sheet, I think. I think it's Coast. Oh, Coast, Coast. Yes, that's, that's correct. It's Coast. Album Sheet already played. So, uh, pretty much Moscow 5 vs. Coast should be a good one. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for that next series. Other than that, hope you enjoyed it, and be sure to follow us everywhere you can. Twitter.com, Facebook.com, slash TV is where you're going to find us. YouTube.com slash Heflamoke is where the VODs will be. I'm Mike Loris. I've been joined by Grandis. And, well, we'll be moving on to the third and final series of the day in just a little while, guys. Stay tuned.